Happy Thursday, everyone. Thanks for joining, taking time out of your life to thrive with me. And um, we're on habit four already. Think when, when. I can't believe how quickly the time seems to be passing. So let's hop in because I do want to go over the private victories. That's what we've achieved over these last few weeks, including the foundation of the seven habits. So as we dive right in, we're going to review habit one, two, and three. Habit one, does everybody know the habits? Are you learning them as we go along? Habit one is be proactive. Habit two is begin with the end in mind. And habit three is to put first things first. Can you, um, does anybody know the habits that way? Not by memory. <laughs> no, you're not remembering. Is that? A confession from a all-time lover of the seven habits. <laughs> yeah, not in order, but I look at the diagram, it makes sense, but I hear it, but I haven't covered the paper and said, hey, spout them off. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So um, let me, I'm trying to get rid of this picture of me, but okay, so that's what I want you to kind of do. If you do know them in your heart, you're using them, but it's really nice to have them in your language um, to remind ourselves to to be proactive, you know, when we say begin with the end in mind, we know that we are considering other possibilities. So uh, try to get to know them. Um, I, I will send them out again. I will add them in one of these scripts and just send everybody all seven habits and just talk, start to look at them. Uh, the habit we will spend most of our time on today is habit four, and now that's branching into our public victory. And the first one is think win win in the public victory. It's uh, we're going to cover what the paradigms are of human interactions. There's six of them that Franklin Covey has listed, and then competition and cooperation has been listed uh, as something I want to emphasize on today. And courage and the consideration grid. So let's just look at habit uh, one real quick. Uh, this is my favorite slide to still share that we can have a stimulus and we can have a response. And then we have the freedom to choose in between how we want to respond to that, what's, what's our value. And that's what habit two really is, when, what, what our value is to what's going on in, in our lives. We, we have to know what that means. And I'm, I'm hearing from my family more and more what they think that means to them. Uh, let me let people in. You know, it was, it was so much easier when Zoom just let everybody in. And I don't know, even during this pandemic, it's caused us to have a more layer of security rather than more freedom. And this is happening while we're talking about freedom to choose. So it's very interesting how our world will create more restrictions for us when we're trying to be free. So that's really important to know about habit four. You know, what is important to you because the whole world is thinking right now and we're not all thinking the same things which is fine too but what are we thinking are we thinking from our highest mental capacity uh where we're based on our imagination and wonder and curiosity or are we coming from a place of mental creation on fear and lack and not enough and you know that's kind of how we had to add passwords to zoom because there was some not higher thinking about how we can be more giving and together it's we had to be more private because of how it was being used so it's interesting where we come from with our mental thinking what's first in our thinking so let's be uh, our imagination and curiosity and together and then that physical creation will come out just as as bold the area that we didn't spend as much time as I would in a classroom setting would be on habit three with the time matrix, doing what's important and urgent. And then there are things that are not important and not urgent. And that's when we're living below the line and those things are uh, other people's issues. I like that. And it might be other people's minor or major issues. If they're major issues and they're important to you, they're up here somewhere. But if they're not they're down here they're below the line anything in excess 
you know, too much worry is below the line. We have to find things that are clever and recreational and back to what we did with Habit 2 with our values clarification. If you've got to finish that, uh, if you've gotten to finish that, you'll know you're going to live below, above the line because some of these things will dissipate. They won't be in your view anymore. And you won't do needless things as often or unnecessary things. And these are very work related, but we're life related because work and life is blended in a way that we've always thought about, but now we've brought about. So we get to live that. So know what your true north is, what your compass is, your values mm -hmm. clarifications tells you that. Mm -hmm. And that's where we want to live from. Anybody not finished their values clarification? Yes. Did everybody work on that? Finish that? Kind of give some attention to that. Did anybody get, not have the questions? Did you find out something about yourself that you didn't know was driving you? Anyone? Let's hear some conversation. You guys are quiet. I was a little surprised what, you know, some of the common themes. I don't know if I really want to say it on here, but I was like, okay, okay. Get my values oh. in order. <laughs> all right i hate to put people on the spot i know i'm so you know transparent I, I i try to pull everybody out there like that and that's not always safe so i do understand <laughs> but uh it's important to do because this is I, I left this slide in here too because this is your you gotta know what your true north is remember we had uh discover plan and act so you, you act from there, you start from your center and your center is your value. And if we don't discover that, we won't, we'll live from other people's values and what people think is important or what they say. And, you know, I don't think we're not supposed to listen to other people, but we've got to be grounded when we do go in listening because we want to be from that, the continuum, let me go to the continuum. The continuum always shows you we're at a dependent to independent, to interdependent stages. So we've got to be sure about who we are and where our compass is before we can get into thinking when, when, because when, when is a behavior. We actually think about the scoreboard when, when, you know, in the game, we don't even get to go to games now. Our world has completely changed. And, you know, I think the guys must be going through some major withdrawals, not being able to go to these ball games that they're used to going to. So now we are in a world where this behavior is stronger than ever because we have to think win-win. And as we think win-win, the behavior comes. So this is George Eliot says, what do you live for if it is not to make life less difficult for each other? And if we know what our true north is, we know what our compass is because we've driven our values properly. And a lot of us know what they are by now. Some of us are in there. You know, I'm, in, I'm 60 now, so I, I've got a, a birthday card here that I've left on my desk all year even though my birthday was in october it says 60 is old enough to have life figured out but young enough to live it and i love it because that means i get to understand what i know about my life but look at what we're doing now you know the seven habits initially came up and here we are doing it as a place to focus our mental spiritual physical social wellness and first it starts with us and then we get out in the world and think that way too and it becomes that so it's not just for us that's just the first part of it that's why there's seven habits not three habits or four habits it's our habit to get ourselves straight go from a dependent to an independent stage so if we've got beginning with the end in mind intact and putting first things first knowing exactly what we're doing with our time and that we have been proactive about all of this because without being proactive, we can't do it. So habit one, two, and three brings us to think win-win. Now to have a think win-win attitude, we have to see that it's, it's, it's for long-term relationships and having mutual respect and mutual benefit. If they don't have that, they're not gonna last, be it our bosses, you know, that relationship, be it our marriages, be it with our children, be it in the community that we live in, 
anywhere in the world, if we are thinking win-win, those are the results that we will have. If we are thinking in any other paradigm other than that, those are the results we will have too. So I like these words. I would write them down in your journal. Mutual respect and mutual benefit. Because if that's not happening, that means everyone who's not doing it, including me, would have to go back to our, uh, let me just go to this. This is going to be the easiest place to find with it. We have to go back to private victory. Anytime we're unsuccessful in a public victory area, that means we might have to, are we being reactive? Have we began with the end in mind? Are we putting first things first? Or we are interacting with someone that may not be attributing these attributes in their life. So again, there will be some kind of uh, lack of rather than mutual of. And behavior shows a lot. There's a lot with the behavior. So I didn't write every one of these down. I'm gonna use my journal that I always use from um, the seven habits. And you're gonna take some notes with these two like we did before, if you wish to uh, relate to each of these, because these are the six paradigms that we live out of. And I'll just read from here. People who choose to win, make sure others also win, practice win-win. People with a win-win paradigm take time to search for solutions that will make them happy and simultaneously satisfy others. So as we look at characteristics of a win-win, which is the first one, they seek mutual benefits. It's a cooperative, not a competitive state of being. And the third bullet is listens more, stays in the communication longer and communicates with more courage. That's a big one. That is a really big one. I'm looking at my family and um, lots of relationships, even with my relationship with work, um, with the with IBM or my spiritual life that I, I'm activist, very active in, and I call myself an activist there because our human spirit is so important. So if we can listen and stay in communication longer, we get past that. Now, here we go with the ones that are lesser. Here's win-lose. People with a win-lose mindset are concerned with themselves first and last. They want to win and they want others to lose. They achieve success at the expense or exclusion of another success. They are driven by comparison, competition, position, and power. So the characteristics of a lose, lose, win lose a human interaction, it's very common scripting for most people. It is authoritarian approach and they use position, power, credentials, possessions, or personality to get the win. Wow. Any questions? Anybody in a win-lose situation? Well, let me not put you on the spot like that. Think of a win-lose situation that you might be dealing with during this pandemic time. Because these are the relationships I want you to really look at as we go through them. If anybody pops in your mind or if you pop in your mind, look, because this is also a time as we're heading to habit seven, which is a habit of taking care of ourselves. So I will mention it often. Uh, taking care of ourselves physically, physically, spiritually, mentally, and social, emotionally. So if any of these paradigms are existing as we're interacting with others, those are things to look at for our own well-being. Lose when is the next option. And if you have questions, make sure you raise your hand or say something. Uh, I would love to hear another voice. Um, lose when people choose People who choose to lose and let others win show high consideration for others, but lack the courage to express and act on their own feelings and beliefs. They are easily intimidated and borrow strength from acceptance and popularity. The characteristics of lose win is voices, no standards, <laughs> no demands, no expectations from anyone. 
is quick to please or appease and buries a lot of feelings. Hmm. Lose, win. That means everybody else can win and they can lose. I can see that in some of the older people in my family. They, you know, I won't put all our business out in the street, but in, in my grandparents' generation, I could see those relationships in the marriages. Lose, lose. People who have a lose, lose paradigms are low on courage and consideration. They envy and they criticize others. They put themselves and others down. Characteristics of those lose-lose paradigms are, is the mindset of a highly dependent person is the same as no win because nobody benefits. It's a long-term result of win-lose, lose-win, or just a win. So that's lose-lose. When, you know, people who hold a win paradigm think only of getting what they want. Although they don't necessarily want others to lose, they are personally set on winning. They think of, they think independently in interdependent situations without sensitivity or awareness of others. So that characteristics is they're self-centered, think me first, don't really care if the other person win or loses, has a scarcity mentality. And we know that scarcity means not enough and abundance means there's plenty to go around. Win-win or no deal is the highest form of win-win. People who adopt this paradigm seek first for win-win. If they cannot find an acceptable solution, they agree to disagree agreeably. That's the ultimate relationship I still strive for. Characteristics allow each party to say no is the most realistic at the beginning of a relationship or a business deal is the highest form of when, 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 no deal. Okay, so let's see if you've got a handle on this. These questions are gonna be very business related because this it was born in my IBM world, but um, it's in our all our worlds now. So I'm just gonna give you a couple of scenarios, whether you think this is gonna be a win-win, win-lose, lose-win, lose-lose, win, win-win, or no deal. So let me pick out, uh number two i'll read number two lila asked eric to stay after work to help her with a a big mailing eric had been feeling sick all day and really wanted to go home and rest but he doesn't like to turn people down especially lila so eric spent three hours after work helping lila what was eric's paradigm win liz who won Oh, she won. So lose win. <laughs> yep. Yep. Very good. Yep. Let's do one more. Let's see. Um, Kenya has been looking for a particular uh, for a particular two person tent in a certain price range. On her friend's suggestion, she went to a mountain dwellers inc. There she found the tent was that she wanted, but it was $75 more than she wanted to pay. The sales rep wouldn't come down on the price, so she decided to look elsewhere. What was her react, Kenya's reaction or interaction? Which paradigm? Win, win, or no deal. Yep, perfect. Win, win, or no deal. Um, so one more, the last one, number seven. You know, I like my sevens. Tom knows that this that his coworker Miriam has not spent her portion of the allotted budget for this year. It was mid December and the company's policy states that unused monies cannot be rolled over to the next year. Tom would really like some new software for his computer so he asked his boss if he could buy that software with the money left from Miriam's budget without speaking to Miriam's first. Tom's interaction was what? Win. Yep, that's it, win. 
it didn't matter what you know what it cost um, Miriam. He went out to get her. He just wanted his software. So you got that idea. So look at the relationships that we are interacting with in our work life, our play life, our community life. Um, as we are getting ready to go back into the world, some of us have already ventured back beyond COVID-19, um, whether we're wearing masks or not, because um, there's still a lot of work is starting to be done with the condos that I live in and people are working out in the yard. Some have masks on. Most of them don't have masks on, like the guys who did the roof yesterday. So um, we've got to figure out the interactions, what paradigm we're going to be in as we're interacting and thinking when when out here in the world too. Um, it's a time to rescript if we haven't already been doing this in this these months that we've been um, quarantined or sequestered, whatever our favorite word is. And a lot of the writing and we've been doing or thinking we've been doing is to get ready to get back in the world from COVID-19. Um, and we know that we can't do the same thing we did before uh, to win. So we have to come up with new results and it first starts with ourselves. So um, what it says here about win-lose conditioning, because a lot of us have been conditioned in our lives, whether we know it or not. That's why I like this material because it's always opportunity to do a new habit, no matter what you've been taught. So early in life, we learn to base our self-worth on comparison and competition. We think about succeeding and winning in terms of someone else failing and losing. Even when cooperation could bring greater results and healthier relationships, we still think win-lose. I win, you lose. And we turn over our efforts to competition. So what I'd like for you to do here, just a minute, maybe you were thinking about relationships, looking at those paradigms. Describe a lose-win pattern in your life that has caused you disappointment and frustration. And I had one just before this call so i'm gonna write it in my journal okay so keep working on that if you have more to say and i didn't give you enough time um, but those are important, uh, and it might be more than one. You know, I like this iceberg um, because it has a lot to do with our character. So I'm going to let someone else read this uh, screen right here. When we talk about competition versus cooperation, someone read what competition and cooperation is, and I just took it out of um, dictionary.com. I will. Competition, rivalry between two or more persons or groups for an object desired in common, usually resulting in a victor and a loser. For cooperation, an act or instance of working or acting together for a common purpose or benefit. Joint action, activity shared for mutual benefit. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. So I use the iceberg again because I think that competition in my mind, I just got this figure in my, my mind that competition is on the surface. You know, you got the trophies and the awards and oh, look at me, where cooperation is, is the bigger mass underneath. So that's why I use that, that, um, that iceberg again, because I think that's where the character is. I think when we're cooperative, we, we come from a, a, a deeper place. We, we know that it's more than us. The situation I used with um, time last week fits for cooperation this week where the manufacturers for the equipment gear for hockey and other sports are now turning that industry into protective gear for our front, front liners, the uh, military and the everyone else that might need to be masked and closed in a protective way because they're exposed to so many people. And that was cooperation and they went deep and, and they share their patents with other people that had similar manufacturing possibilities. So not just getting all the money like we would normally do, those two companies would be rival against each other so they could make all the money. Now they went deeper 
and went cooperative and sent blueprints out so they could re reenact that in other places and as many places as possible. So measure any of your results, um, benefits and problems where we have competition versus cooperation within the relationship. So I'm gonna give you a, a minute on that one to think, and I've got one too. All right, um, just to hear another voice, let's talk about win-win characteristics. That does fit with the iceberg because we know that character is beneath and personality is on top. So what is win-win character? Would someone read the ingredients to that? Your character yeah. communicates your deepest beliefs and values. A win-win person possesses three character traits, integrity, maturity, and abundance mentality. Trustworthiness flows out of these character traits. Integrity, people of integrity are true to their feelings, values, and commitments. Maturity, mature people express their ideas and feeling with courage and with consideration for the ideas and feelings of others. Abundance mentality, People with an abundance mentality believe that there is plenty for everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. I, you know, it just hit me when you read that to me, Linda. I'm reading this all the time to other people where, and I, I consider myself a mature person, but I wondered when you read it, when mature people express their ideas and feelings and courage with consideration that I do for the ideas and feelings of others, I don't know that I always do. Mm hmm you know, and that means uh, there might be a little immaturity going on, and I never really looked at that that way before. One example that comes to mind, I'll share, that kind of goes in this. It was earlier this week, and it was a simple, somewhat of a simple situation, but my husband and I had had the house recited, and it took taken very long, different things related or whatever, but um, they did, we did the final walkthrough, and I wrote up my list. We took the time to do it ahead of time. But then when they got here, they wanted to do each item as they walked around the house. <laughs> well, of course, I didn't have time for that. And they got held up on certain things. And um, they got it all done except for one thing. They didn't have the ladder that was high enough for it. So they said they'd come back, you know, the next day in the morning. They didn't show up. And my husband's like, I bet you they're not coming. And I said, well, let's communicate. <laughs> let's just say to the person, we haven't seen him yet. And then they gave us a new time. He's all good. So he was happy. But in the meantime, I had looked out my office window and realized I missed like one corner of the house, one tiny corner that had like five little touch-ups. And my husband's like, whoa, like we already <laughs> told him it was done. And I was like, well, I think they would want us to be totally happy, you know, with it. So mm -hmm. I said, he goes, well, you can take care of that. You can ask them. So... <laughs> They look, started working on the other piece, and I said to the guy, I said, Tomas, could you come look at one thing? And I said, I'll admit it's my fault. I did not see this. I did not tell you this. But I just look out my office, and I want to be totally happy. So could you look? And he looked up, and he was thinking. And then he says, did your husband still have that ladder? And I realized what he was thinking is he only brought the really tall ladder. <laughs> that didn't work for that spot. So I said, oh yeah, we can provide the ladder. He goes, yeah, no problem. And to see the teamwork of my husband with the two guys taking this big heavy ladder and working it together. And like, we felt like we had all done that corner of the house. Like I was thrilled. I said, muy, muy, mi casa muy bonita. And they were like half there. <laughs> and it was just like a big joy, but it was, just being courageous, quote unquote, and asking, mm -hmm. and also telling him he had the right to say no. Like I, I had to accept that he said no, because my end of the deal was to, I told him one last thing, you know? Yes. Right. Right. So it, it's, I guess it's like an everyday thing, you know, our moods and our things get in the way of our maturity or our thing. Um, but it's a simple thing that happened now timed with what you presented to us kind of helps put it in my mind better. 
Great. I love it. Thank you for being so candid with us. Uh, and it, it shows up all day long. And I'm telling you, it tells us when we have to check ourselves to get to win, when we might have to go back to be proactive, mm -hmm. begin with the end in mind, put first things first, you know, what are we trying to accomplish here? And that's only when we can win public victories. If we don't win our private, we can't. Uh, man, there's no we're doomed <laughs> when it comes to other people you know we we just we just yep. are because we're going to go in ranting and raving because we're dependent on getting it done the way we want and the, how i and what you but if we have a bigger idea that proactive and the value and beginning with the end in mind is the value there it's not just the little statements it's the big ones it's the it's not the surface it's the deeper the richer you know, we can live from the surface all our lives and not get a thing we want. My daughter put in my mind before the call and, you know, I had to go think a little. I'm like, no, I got to go work too. But I thought about, she said, what about people that didn't, that leave the planet that don't live their dreams? I have never thought about that in my whole life because I believe life is my dream. But there are other people that have been maybe not proactive or beginning with the end in mind or putting first thing first and they thought about things that never came about mm. yeah. and that's not what we're here to do we are here to bring about life abundantly and that's what this third one is i love this one and it says i'm an abundance mentality people with an abundance mentality believe that there is plenty for everyone and I learned that lesson very deeply within IBM because I had been a military wife and traveled the world. We had packed and unpacked boxes everywhere and I lived all over. And then when my husband got out of the military, I felt it was my time to start my career. And I started IBM in 1994. Well, I had worked for an airline um, train there. I was one of their um, um, quality control people you know just all kinds of things and when i started ibm i was square one and i thought that was beneath me but i'm like Oop, let me get my foot in the door got my foot in the door and when it was time to start moving along in my career i, I knew training would be an avenue but at the avenue that opened up was in the quality and so i went and i applied for the position and i didn't get it and i'm like i've done this before and why can't i and so I, I had a scarcity mentality in that thought, not realizing that there was plenty of go around. But I had taken the seven habits as a course by then. And something said that what's for me is for me. That was the abundance mentality. Well, in IBM back then, you had to stay in a role for 18 months before you could move into another role. Well, within six months of the quality role that I thought was made for me, a training position opened up and the rest is history. I would not have been able to move into the training department and by 18 months, all those windows would have been closed. So if we stay with an abundance mentality that there's more, what's, what there's plenty. So if that job wasn't for me, there is a job, there is a role, there is a, a, a house, there is a place, there is a man, there is a girl, there is for you. You have to know that there is abundance in life. But we have to trust our own character because if I had got out of character and, and out of integrity, I might have not been available for the abundant. If I had been immature, if I had, we, all these things matter. That's a part of our private victory. Agree? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So with that said, let's um, consider you know, our high character, because we want to walk in the world that way. We are going to eventually get to go back to restaurants, I think. I don't even know how that's going to go. So this is a, an actual uh, situation where we're going to look at um, a, a restaurant situation. I think I've got a typo in there, so I'm going to read from my book. I won't make you guys read. All right, so we're going to look at how we use these qualities. Um, 
from your characteristics traits of integrity and maturity and abundance mentality, which is so strong, meaning there's more than enough, you have a strong foundation of high courage and high consideration. So we've got a bar here where it says you got low courage or high courage, and then you got low, I mean, excuse me, low consideration, high courage is the bottom grid. And then on the side is courage, low or high courage. So whatever is in low courage and low consideration, you know, that's not going to be the best thing. What would we, what would we consider low courage and low consideration based on the six paradigms? If you can see that, you can cheat, but right here you can't. <laughs> so what would be low courage um, and low consideration? So let's look at the scenario first. We'll, we'll you real, use the real life scenario. Um, you've been having lunch with a boss and a client at a downtown deli. The deli is crowded with the noon hour patrons and the service is extremely slow. You feel pressed and you really need to get back to the office in 20 minutes. The waiter brought your bosses and the client's order 15 minutes ago and they have almost finished eating. When the waiter finally brings your sandwich, it's not the one you ordered. Okay, so how would you or the person who got the, you know that scenario, what would how would they respond if it's low courage and low consideration? Because when we consider that lose lose, let's just that would be lose lose. I'm gonna just do it's lose lose here, lose win here, high consideration. And high courage is always win-win. But if you have high courage and low consideration, it's still lose-win. So back to that grid. If they did not get their meal in the same time that the others, what would be a lose-lose situation? How would that look? To not say anything okay, about Not say anything. Um, but what would low consideration, low consideration to the server. Say it again to the server, something to the server, Being right? Rude. Being right. rude. Exactly. Be rude to the server. Very good. What would be low consider, low courage and high consideration? Lose just when? What would look like lose when? Just accepting the sandwich you didn't want. Yeah. Just keeping your mouth shut, basically. Yep. Yep, and pay them for the sandwich you did exactly. not want. <laughs> so, yes, very good. All right, what would be high courage and low consideration? That would look like what? Win, lose? What would be win, lose in that situation? High courage, low consideration. I think high courage would be to be able to speak up, but low consideration would be if, you know, the way you approached it was by just being rude. Right, right. Rude again. Exactly. I'm, I'm going to take this in. Uh, you got me the wrong sandwich, but I'm not paying for it. And, walk out, you know, so. and that would be bad to the boss and the client too. What would be win-win? What's high consideration and high courage? How would that go? just to say i'll eat it but they take it off the bill okay That's like fine. you know if it's not something you're totally whatever or you just say could you make me the right sandwich and just take it to go right that's a good one i like that um what else maybe um the establishment said you know you can come back again and um yeah. or they give it to them you know for being late that happens sometimes um just Sunday, I um, I wanted lobster tail and steak from Outback. Outback is one of the restaurants that have opened their dining room here in Atlanta, but I'm not ready for that yet in my own head. You know, I'm not sure what it all means yet. So I, I still wanted my meal. So I actually ordered it in advance and the lady took the order. So on Sunday, I get a tracking on my phone saying the steak's 
on the room on the move that's how they put it in your text and so it was supposed to be there about 10 minutes to one and one o'clock comes and one ten comes so i called and they didn't know where to send the order and i said well i got a a text saying so and she, then um i said well let me speak to the manager because i wasn't sure where the conversation was going to go with the person i was speaking to so the manager got on the phone and and spoke to the fact that you know normally they don't take the order in advance it wasn't even um uh, we didn't have your address or phone number and so she retook the order and uh, by the time the order got here I, I signed for it and i paid for it in advance the first time i had to sign for it in a while because usually it's uh, contactless but they did have me sign for it this time and then when i signed for it they gave me a twenty dollar gift certificate for outback so although there was conversation about it wasn't taken or you can't do that i think it turned out to be win-win why was that a win-win or what did i see it wrong did i it should have been a, <laughs> was it a win-win or win-lose or lose-win what was that one it was a win-win you got your meal and you were also compensated for the inconvenience I thought so too. Yep. So we're making these scenarios out here in our lives, even if we're not leaving the house. <laughs> so there's a lot going on in our paradigms because it is how we see. And this particular paradigm is is thinking. It's not the scoreboard like when the you know the the Falcons are playing um, the Patriots. It's not the same thing. It, it's a situation where both go in thinking win-win. Everybody's not, you know, they go in thinking win-win collectively, but one of the teams are going to want to win. And I still use those analogies for the team because if the team think they went in for win-win and they lost, they still did the best they could and they will learn from that. So every situation, even if it's, um, um, out to win somebody's got to have uh the the end game what's for you is in that situ situation too like with me not getting the quality assurance role because training was going to be more abundant for me and, and that was the role i could pick and and have a, a long-term life with ibm too so it's in long-term relationships and interdependent uh situations we have to bring interdependency and i think that's why i took it to the manager's level because she may have had more proactive beginning with the end in mind put first things first qualities than the first person i was talking to i could almost pick up on that so you know I, we want to eliminate stress in COVID 19 too so we're finding that we're talking to people that have not achieved their private victories as you find tune yourself you're going to be indicators of that and you know whether not to waste not, let it not be below the line time not that everybody's not important but your time is valuable too and you get to decide how you're going to use your time and if it's to educate that person, educate them. But if it's to get your state, you know, move up to the next one. <laughs> That's what I did. So as we close out, I love that we can think win-win. Our security comes from within instead of without. And that's by Stephen Covey, who's the author of The Seven Habits. A tremendous individual. I got to meet him and, and his, his, a couple of his kids who are in the industry. And I, he was a man that truly lived what he wrote. And I don't know who helped him write it, but it has taken on new life for me because every one of these habits work. If we use them, it's up to us to work them. And when we work them, that's sharing. That's exactly what we're doing with this call. If we go share in our household and we share in our work environment and we share specifically with ourselves too even if we're sharing with our pets you know our pets have energy too and and they can tell when we're being proactive or reactive or <laughs> when we're beginning with the end of mind and and we're doing all kinds of things it's really up to us to know that energy is energy so as we're teaching and and being secure in who we are this this, these habits that we have make a complete difference. Mm -hmm. Did anything stir up in anybody about anything they want to share before we close out today? You've got a little time for it back to yourself to, to do what you need to with 
thinking more about this or working on habits one, two, or three, any areas that you may want to dig deeper into? Um, any questions, comments, concerns? Well, I, I was just concerned that a win for us, for ourselves, could be a lose for someone else. And sometimes I think we have to be sensitive to that. Okay. Okay. I like that one. Let's read win again. When, um, is it win lose or just win? Cause you know, we have win lose and win lose characteristics are very common scripting for most people. It's authoritative, uh, you know, authoritative approach. It's on power and position and credentials and possession. So they're not going to consider anyone else. You know, they're out to get that. But if it's a win, their characteristics are self-centered think me first, doesn't really care if the other person wins or loses, has a scarcity mentality. Ah, okay. You hear? So, yeah. So if, if they go in, we have to go in with a win-win. We have to go in with the thinking that I want to win and I want my daughter to win. I want to win and I want IBM to win. I want to win and I want you to win. We don't go in that way. We go in with those other two that you picked up. They don't want us to win. Or either they don't care. <laughs> so we run into that. So now your radar is a little, a little more fine-tuned. And as you recalibrate during these times of sequestering more, you get to look at those. And it's back to that word. Where's the mutual benefit word? Um, where do we have mutual benefit? It's supposed to be mutual, this abundance. It's supposed to benefit both people. I think I didn't write it down. Maybe you should write. Oh, I did have it somewhere. It's in the paradigms here. Our relationships are mutually respected and mutually beneficial. That's what you're saying. But they have to go in with the win-win or, or win-win no deal. Either any other paradigm is going to be less for someone. That makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank you for that added added edge to talking about the the word mutual. When you see it's not mutual, that's when it gets really a lot of courage and consideration have to come up. The restaurant situation that we read was based on that. You know how we were going to react and how they whether the restaurant was going to be win win or win lose or lose lose. Or, you know, it could have been all those scenarios. It could have been win-win, no deal. I don't want this sandwich and, you know, but then he would have eaten. You know, that's still a lose for somebody if he was hungry. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> yep. So these are good ones to look at. And this one's the hardest, was the hardest. I think that's why it's first with the private, uh, with the public victories, because if we can achieve thinking when, when, then we get to seek first to understand, then to be understood and then synergize. But if we can't have the idea, just like what you pointed out, which is perfect to lead into habit, we're not, we're not listening to the other person. We don't care what they have to say. And that's kind of what got pointed out with talking with one, one of my kids today. I'm like, well, I'm doing that. But that's the habit that I saw out more, seek first to understand than to be understood because I was trying to be understood. So we have, that's a, we have to think win-win. We have to have that courage to stay in a situation because that relationship matters to us long-term even if there's conflict. Matter of fact, that's when you know it matters. To the stranger on the street, you could give a flip, <laughs> you know? But if it's in the house or it's in your, your love house, you know, which could be Wisconsin, you know, then you still gotta work on it. And then what do you, that takes courage and that takes consideration. So even though I have courage, I might not be considerate in some situations and that's what it's shining light bright to me. So what do I do? What are my habits? What am I going to change about that? And those are interdependent situations because it's with someone else. It's just not with me. So good. We've got, we've got relationships out there that we can improve and we've got relationships out there that we can let go of. We just have to decide which ones they are. And the others will help us decide too, because they're in it too. If they don't want to be bothered with us, then they won't. 
Questions, comments, updates, concerns? Angela, did you send these charts out or are you? I have not unless you've asked for them. Um, I'm actually thinking about um, posting this on, I've, I've finally created a, a YouTube page. So I think oh. I'm going to throw them out there. So I'm going to send everybody that link. I just did that recently um, with one of the habits. I said, you know what, they all can go out there just in case people want to look at them later. And then if you ever want to talk to me one on one, because this is a, you know, flash class of this is it's such a deep, rich, bountiful information. I just wanted to give it in portions that I could chunk it out because life is so busy. But we used to spend three days in a classroom with this. I, I used, we used to have to get managers approval for people. And matter of fact, managers were approving this and they were people were going in the classrooms and coming away. Uh, some people would leave IBM and do new jobs. Myers-Briggs was doing the same thing when there was a little more job um, possibilities out there and promotions and it throughout the world and uh it was it's life changing so it allow your life to change where you are right now and it's forever been um a changing my life because our lives change anyway so can they change for the better or do they change for the worse so i think this helps mine to help change for the better i'm always looking to be greater and so you'll always, it's like eating. We'll never stop eating. <laughs> you know, we need food and we need water and we need our habits to support our lives. So I'll, I'll forever be here for you for this. So thanks for asking that. So I'll put that out there for sure. And anybody who wants them in their inbox, just send me an email and I'll, I'll send them directly to you. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great Thursday. Great weekend. See you in a week. Thank you for caring that this matters. Take care. Yeah, wonderful. Bye. Thank okay. you. Bye.